So what is the automatic nervous system? It's simply a set of pathways. It's pathways for the and from the central nervous system. What's the central nervous system and from the nervous system to the periphery? What exactly are the effectors which it supplies this normal response? For example, GID or the bronchi, etc. But I just want to say Number two, very important, the cardiac muscle experience we have done. These are three factors which are supplied by the autonomic system. It has three divisions. The important divisions of the autonomic system are number one, the sympathetic nervous system. Number two, parasympathetic nervous system. And lastly, enteric nervous system, which you have to be covered in GIT. So, uh, these are the pathway. Now the look from the spinal cord. If we start off, I'll give an example of the somatic nerve supply, which is for the skeletal muscles. It consists of a single motor wave. It will extend from the spinal cord to the skeletal muscle. It's a single motor one. Uh, will release acetabulum and its end as a neurotransmitter, which acts on the nerve. Talk about now the words the autonomic nervous system and its two constituents. Number one, sympathetic system. In the autonomic nervous system, it, uh, this pathway is basically made up of two types of neurons. There are ganglions in between. The sympathetic ganglion is located right near the exit point in the spinal cord, in the periventricular or paraventricular region of the spinal cord. Okay. So before the diet, there will be three ganglionic fibers which exit the spinal cord and enter in the paraventricular or periventricular ganglion. Please release acetylcholine. The receptors are going to be nicotinic in nature. Right. Another thing about the three ganglionic fibers is that they are short. If they are short and they release, so that they will have this going on with the post ganglion neurons, they are very long. So if they are very long, then all the symptoms will be present in the effector organ. Uh, about 98% of the sympathetic post ganglionic neurons, they release, they are adrenergic nature and release norepinephrine. The receptors which enter the norepinephrine will act on on alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2. These receptors are present mostly in the smooth muscles, glands, right? And the cardiac muscles as well. Very small amount of the post ganglionic sympathetic nerves, specifically supplying the sweat glands, they're acetylcholine releasing neurons. Okay, they're purely energetic in nature. The receptor effect will be muscular. This is all about the sympathetic nervous system neuron and pathway. Coming towards the parasympathetic pathway, uh, the ganglion of the parasympathetic system, it lies in or near the effector. Okay, hence it's pre and the neuron is going to be very long, and the post ganglion is going to be short. Both of these neurons are purely energetic. Yeah, they release acetylcholine at the end of, of the neuron. But look at the receptors. All of the ganglionic receptors, if you focus, are nicotinic in nature, along with the neuromuscular junction, which is also a nicotinic receptor. But if we talk about the post ganglionic uh, cholinergic receptors, they are muscular. They are not the sympathetic nervous system. All the parasympathetic nervous system, the post ganglionic neurons, the synapse on the uh, receptor, which are muscular in nature. As the post ganglionic uh, neuron is going to be short, as the ganglion lies within or near the receptor. Last but not the least, we're going to talk about enteral medulla, which basically acts like a sympathetic set of neurons. Three uh, ganglionic fibers exit the spinal cord and release the adrenal medulla where the synapse or liquid cells and release acetylcholine receptors and nicotine in the gap. As we are referring to this or assuming this to be a gland If we can say the adrenal medulla is going to release 80% of epinephrine and 20% of more epinephrine which directly enters the circulation. The cells which release these cells are zoomorphin cells. Okay. Going towards the organization, this thing basically sums up what we have studied in the previous slide. Okay, we'll quickly go through it. Let's talk about the sympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system first. Where exactly in which regions of the spinal cord are they 
exiting the spiral point from it is the threshold number region. Okay, the conics and the number starting from P1 and L3. This is the sympathetic division. Okay. Sympathetic division exits, they are scheduled three times on a clear onset when exits the spinal cord the level of T1 to L3, the threshold number region. Ganglion. Where is the ganglion lie? It lies next to the right next to the spinal cord in the paramutable or Pre-vitable, hence the pre-ganglionic exons are short, while the post-ganglionic exons are longer. What are the effector organs? Effector organs will be your smooth muscles, whether they are of GIT or the I or any other region, the cardiac muscles and the GANS, similar to that of the sympathetic nervous system. If you look at the neuro effector junction, okay, the junction between the nerve ending and the receptor, there is diffusion diffuse branching of the new nerve ending and the receptor is basically concentrated, not concentrated in one region, they also lie diffusely and cover a wide area. Coming towards the transmitted release at the preganglionic fiber is acetylcholine and the receptor is nicotine. If we talk about the postganglionic fiber, then the transmitter is norepinephrine and the receptors are alpha 2, alpha 1. Beta 1, beta 2. And then towards the parasympathetic division of the automatic nervous system, uh, these will arise. The ganglionic neurons of the parasympathetic system will arise from the cranial segment. Cranial may, uh, the nuclei of the cranial nerves will be 3, 7, 9, 10. Okay? They are parasympathetic in nature. Then we come towards the central region, it uh, ranges from S2, 3, and 4. Come towards the ganglia, where does the ganglia lie? The parasympathetic ganglion, it lies near or inside the infectant organ, hence the ganglionic exons are long and post ganglionic exons are short. The effectors remain the same as the sympathetic, the smooth muscles, cardiac muscles, and then again, branching and the neural effector junction remains the same, but the neurons will diffusely branch off receptors, hence, are not concentrated in the same region and lie diffusely. The pre ganglionic and the post ganglionic transmitter remains the same. They're cholinergic in nature, it is acetylcholine, but the receptor is different. It's pre ganglionic uh, will synapse at the receptor, which is nicotinic. And post can be on the one with synapse at the receptor, which is muscular. This is the somatic nerve supply, it supplies the skeletal muscle. This key to um, neuro effector junction is that the neurons they supply discreetly in an organized manner to the receptors which are localized on the motor end plate. Uh, the neurotransmitted release is acetylcholine, and the receptor is. Nicotinic. Some of them have already covered. The neurovascular junction arrangement is that the skeletal muscle fiber is single motor neuron. On the other hand, the autonomic nervous system it has two sets of neurons, pre and post ganglionic. Post synaptic neuron it will innervate the alpha tissue and form the fuse branching network. It spreads to a wide area. At the end, it forms roots at its end. Because the nerve fiber will form beads at the end, which we call varicosities, which basically contain neurotransmitter in packed up residues. Okay, due to its widespread uh, branching and diffuse innervation, there is overlap between postganglionic neurons such that the target tissue will be innervated by multiple postganglionic neurons at the same time. This is one of the case at the neuromuscular junction for this distribution of things. Right, talking now specifically of the sympathetic nervous system. We've already covered that uh, the pre fibers will arise from the threshold number junction, T1, T1, T1. Uh, when is it stimulated? It's stimulated at times of fight or flight mode. Okay, this is when the body needs to mobilize. It needs to you know, to form some activity. These are the simple functions. By acting on uh, the blood vessels and the heart, the blood pressure increases, blood flow increases, and peer pressure increases, blood rate increases. Its contractility, its rate, uh, speed of conduction in the lower that increases. The piece of metabolic rate increases, blood glucose level increases by increasing glycogenolysis and glucomyogenesis. You know, glucose will be formed, the glycogen will be broken down, mental activity increases as well as alertness increases. These are the areas where it supplies sympathetic nervous system which supplies the eye will act on the radial muscles. When the radial muscles contract, it leads to pupillating dilation, nucleases. It takes the max on the heart to increase its heart rate, contractility, as well as speed of conduction between the nodes, bronchodilation. 
factor on stroke muscles of the bronchioles. Uh, in the GIT, it is going to increase the motility with relaxation of the smooth muscles and will strengthen the contractile muscle of the sphincters. Okay? And will decrease the secretion uh, of the glands as well. Back in the dermatolite disease, it will have been 80% rather than 20 And it acts on the genitals causing ejaculation. So, like the resistance causing ejaculation. This is an interesting case scenario which we will discuss in detail in the class. A 48 year old woman is a physician with complaints of panic attacks. She reports that she experienced a racing heart, that means heart rate is increased, and that she can feel even see her heart pounding. She complains of throbbing headache cold hands, cold feet, that means facial constriction at the very feet, visual disturbances, nausea, vomiting, blood pressure is elevated, 230 to 125. She is admitted, evaluated, and has hypertension. 24 hour urine sample reveals elevated level of metanephrine, more metanephrine, VMA, 3, 4, sorry, 3 hydroxy, 4 hydroxy, and acid. What are these? These are breakdown of metabolic end products of non-epilation So the physician reads out the causes. She is diagnosed to have a tumor of the adrenal medulla, which is called fusion cycle. CT abdomen release uh, reveals 3.5 centimeter mass in the right adrenal medulla. Patient is admitted, is given alpha blocker. And so what end one is surgery is performed, tumor recovers. BP returns to normal and other symptoms. is a very important case scenario of fibromas hyperma, which is a tumor of the adrenal gland which produces large amounts of water in the In other words, the parasympathetic nervous system. This is activated at times of energy conservation or when you need to restore. It gets the restorative part of the story when you need to conserve energy. B ganglionic neurons, poor energy, post ganglionic neurons, also poor energy. The sectors being nicotinic, hair, and muscarinic hair, right? So, B uh, ganglionic neurons arising from the cranial and sectoral regions. Cranial nerves are 3, 7, 9, 10. Oculomotor, facial, glossopharyngeal, pains. And subdivisions are S234. It's always supplying the same organs, eyes, but functions are the opposite. Eye means going to cause pupillary constriction. It basically controls the amount of light leads to uh, due to contraction of the circular muscles in the And secondly, it's going to cause uh, increase focal power of the lens to focus near objects by contraction of the circular muscles. Take care of increase on the secretion, maternity in the GIT, heart rate decrease, contractility decrease. Uh, parasympathetic has no effect on the vascular system, stone or for the lab. Bronchial construction, uh, relaxation of the sphincters, increased maternity and secretions in the GIT, similar for the journal bladder as well, and causes erection in the male genital region. This is a good table that summarizes the sites now of the receptor and their mechanism of action, very important. Very frequently asked in the bypass and the MCQs. Talking about the adrenal receptors first, four types of adrenal receptors alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2. Alpha 1, coming towards the alpha 1 first, where are they located? They are located in the vascular small vessels. Which muscles which need contraction in the case amount of blood supply? They will lead to basal constriction of the vessels in the skin, splanchanic renal regions, which at time of fight and flight will not need much of the blood supply. Number two, it's going to supply the sphincters. Sphincters of the GIT and the bladder will lead to their constriction and fusion. Last but not the least, it supplies the radial muscles of the iris, which will lead to nebraceous pupillary dilation. Mechanism of action is GQ. GQ is the G protein system, which leads to increase amount of inositol 145 triphosphate and also increases the intracellular calcium. Now, towards the alpha 2 receptors located in the gastrointestinal wall, mechanism action is G inhibitory, hence leads to relaxation of the gastrointestinal walls, having decrease the level of cyclic AMB by inhibition of the MP. 
recognize like the system. We don't want the sectors. We don't want the sectors ex exclusively or majority of them are looking within that file. Okay, they will increase the heart rate, contractility, and speed of conduction. Also present in the adipose tissue, which have a nipolysis, and also in the kidneys, where they are helping when in when again to uh, control or increase the blood pressure. Okay. We don't want to set this on a big death. These three locations aren't in the post tissue. The mechanism of action is via the G stimulate routine, which stimulates adrenaline cyclase, increasing the number of the number of cyclic in. Last but not the least, the Peter do receptor. This again is located in the vascular smooth muscles, but it will cause vasodilation and supply more blood supply, uh, more blood to the nuclear areas. For example, Scurvy muscles at the time of flight of flight. Okay, opposite to that, as well. Okay, it was also supplying vascular smooth muscles, but it caused reason for Then, BD2 is found at the walls of the GID wall, bladder wall, and bronchiolar smooth muscles, where it will cause relaxation in all of these three areas, four areas, sorry, uh, causing bronchodynamic. You can give a fraction of beta 2. That is something that uh, receptors is why G stimulating, similar to the tongue. Right. And coming towards the cholinergic nerves, there are two types nicotinic and muscarinic. Nicotinic being found at the neuromuscular junction, the central motor inflate. It is also found at all of the preganglionic neuronal ends to the sympathetic or more parasympathetic, uh, and as well as at the retinal medulla. Uh, these names mentioned in red are the blockers. So, curare drugs basically blocks the neuromuscular junction. Hexamethonium exclusively blocks the uh, autonomic ganglia. Mechanism of action is simply by opening of the sodium potassium channels, causing depolarization and polarization. Coming towards the muscarinic receptors, which are found on the heart. In the heart, the mechanism of action is G inhibitory in nature. The rest of the places, muscles and gland, the mechanism of action is GQ in nature. Okay? The second percent of protein is GQ, working through the ionosotone triphosphate system of visible cell calcium. And uh, the blocker of muscarinic receptor is atrophy. Then, in sympathetic, uh, sympathetic nervous system, those supply the sweat glands, the receptors are uh, again It's a similar slide showing the spinal cord regions and the organs and their effects on the respective organs. So we will talk about that. We'll come here towards the stable from BRS physiology. It very nicely sums up the organs, the effect of sympathetic and parasympathetic in the receptors which are present in the respective organs. So starting off from the heart, for the sympathetic action, the receptor is beta-1. Beta-1 receptors are located in the heart and two additional regions, which is the kidney and the fat cell, beta-1 receptors. Okay? So beta-1 receptors you get at three spots, the heart, the kidneys, the fat cells, and the heart and the process heart increase in heart rate, increase force of contraction, as well as increase speed of conduction. So all three elements. In the kidneys, it will cause increased release of renin, which will increase the blood pressure in return. And lastly, in the fat, it causes lipolysis. Right. In the heart, if you look at the parasympathetic action, muscarinic receptors are present, which will decrease the heart rate, decrease the contractility, and the speed of conduction. Come towards the vascular smooth muscles. Now, depending upon whether you need to cause vasoconstriction in the <coughs> sorry, in the unneeded regions at that time of fight or flight, uh, vasoconstriction takes place in the vessels of the skin, splanch and the GID, the renal regions as well, via the alpha 1 receptors. And uh, will cause vasodilation by the beta receptors present in the skeletal. Important point low parasympathetic nerve supply to the vascular smooth muscles. Parasympathetic nerve supply does not supply the muscles. GID. GID, uh, on the GID, the sympathetic action is to basically decrease the motility, decrease the secretion, and to uh, strongly constrict the sphincters. So in the walls of the smooth muscle with the GID, as well as the beta receptors are located, and from the sphincters, we have the alpha one. You okay, remember the alpha one being at the splanchings in blood muscles and on the sphincters with GID, as well as the bladder. 
ठीक है सो इट कॉजेस कॉन्ट्रेक्शन Similarly, in the GIT, if you come to work, sometimes in fact, it uh, system in motor uh, sorry, muscular receptors are located, which will increase the motility by contracting the smooth muscles and cause relaxation of the sphincter. Similarly, moving on to the bronchial sympathetic system causes bronchial dilation by action of beta two receptors and bronchial constriction by the parasympathetic action in the sclerotic system. So, coming towards the sex organ, uh, sympathetic supply causes ejaculation, parasympathetic supply causes erection. Bladder wall, just like the uh, gastrointestinal wall, relaxation of the bladder wall by the sympathetic system, beta 2 receptors, constriction of the sphincters, alpha receptors. So, the parasympathetic muscular receptors will cause contraction. Uh, so, the sweat glands. Sympathetic system causes increased amount of sweating and the receptor, despite it being the sympathetic nervous system, the receptor is muscarinic. Come towards the eye. The sympathetic system will cause Contraction of the medial muscle, causing pupillary dilation, mid-gases. On the other hand, the parasympathetic system will cause pupillary constriction by causing the contraction of the circular muscles. Uh, if you talk about the lens of the eye, then the parasympathetic basically adjusts vision for the near field vision by contraction of the cerebral muscles and sympathetic causes dilation or relaxation of the cerebral muscle causing adjustment for far vision. One of the beta, this was why beta receptors, dilation of the pupil is why alpha one receptors and constriction, contraction of the cerebral muscles was why muscle receptors of the parasympathetic vision. We have already covered kidney and fat cells along with the heart for beta one receptors. A few of the centers, the overall of the centers, where exactly are they located in the brain, brain stem and the support of the level? The brain stem consists of the medulla in the lowermost region, then the pons, superior the midbrain, and finally the epithelium is on top. So the medulla has the vasomotor center, which controls the vessel tone of the muscle and hence the blood pressure. Then it also has the respiratory center, swallowing center, cuffing, and vomiting centers. P for pons, P for neurotaxic center. Midbrain contains the micturation center, hypothalamus center, along with the many other controlling centers, controls temperature, thirst, and uh, That's about it. Regarding the important things from the chronic nervous system, thank you for listening.